Anyway. Okay. <sighs> All right, everybody. Let's begin on this gorgeous day. Let's sit tall. And just take a minute to tune into the breath. We're going to practice beak breath. Starting that out, you're going to take an inhale in. And then on the exhale, you're going to purse your lips and like you're blowing out bubbles or candles on the cake. So breathe in. So that's in through the nose. Belly's expanding. On the exhale, if you take your hands to your belly, you're going to feel how it goes in. And breathe in and breathe out. So take it all the way to the end of the exhale so you really feel that belly pull in. One more time. Inhale, belly expands, gets big. Exhale, belly draws in. It's a nice way to feel of what the exhale is intended to do. Sometimes people do this breath a few times when they're feeling anxiety. Um, it's more of a yogic breath than something we apply on a daily basis, but you can try it and see how it is for you. Some breathing techniques, like the Buteco one that I taught before, they don't believe in ever breathing out through the mouth unless you're exercising at high intensity, and then it's going to happen sometimes. So know that in general, when you're in a seated, steady state, or you're just in a relaxed state, and you're, you're either standing or seated, it's going to be more the in and out through the nose. But every so often, a technique like this can either bring awareness into your body or let go some tension. Let's inhale and swing our arms forward. Exhale them out to the side. Inhale, we breathe in. And exhale, we have our ha. Ha. That big, loud ha. Let's go again. Inhale, arms swing forward. Exhale out to the side. Inhale, swing forward. And exhale in. There you go. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Ha. That ha. So you're slicing the air with your pinky side of your hand. Now, we're gonna try this and vary it up a bit, or you can keep it like we just did it with the inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, or this is another way it's done. You go inhale, 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 ha. Inhale, 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 ha. The reason we do this is the inhale brings in more energy. So in this type of movement, we are inviting more energy into the body. One more time. Inhale, inhale, inhale. There you go. Let's circle the shoulders around and about. It's a great thing to do. It's called breath of joy. Just to invite in some energy when you might be feeling a little low or just to kind of wake yourself up on a Friday sunny morning. Circle the shoulders up, back, around, down. Let's reverse it. Back, up, forward, and down. Back, up, forward, and down. A few more times. Breathing in and out as we do this. Come to center. And let's lift our right elbow, lowering the left arm down. Keep the sitting bones glued to the chair. And let's alternate. Left elbows rising, right arms down. And alternate. 
and alternate. Notice what it feels like to lift the elbow up and get a little bit of a side bend here. And we're gonna shift towards our cactus or goalpost arms. There you go. Breathe in, breathe out as we tilt from one side to the other. Now there should be no pain and we should feel kind of strong and lengthy here. So let's come back to center, take an inhale in, pull the belly in and up, and now let's do the side bend again and see how it feels different. One way and then the other. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's add in the heels rising. So inhale, one heel rises, exhale, lower it down, and then the other. Doesn't matter which one. So it's going to be same side that you're going, same side that your arm is up, your heel is up. Just alternating it. Breathe in, breathe out, and then come back to center. Lift both heels, tilt your elbows forward, lift your heart, and relax the back of the hand so they're angling back. Now keep the back of your neck long and take your fingers back there, lower your heels down. Let's sit back upright. Sit back upright. Take your fingertips to the back of your head and gently press the back of your head into your fingers. And then imagine you're lifting tall, 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 tall. And now let's exhale and side bend towards the right. Back upright. Side bend towards the left and back upright. Take your elbows down, but no pushing the head. They're just, you're gonna keep your fingertips on your head, but no pushing the head. Take your chin towards your chest and the elbows lower down. And then inhale, you can relax your head into your fingertips as your elbows lift skyward. So this is a variation of cat-cow. Exhale, round, no pushing ahead. Inhale, lift heart, relax head back into fingertips. Breathing, you're exhaling as you curl in, you're inhaling as you lift up. Come back upright, take your fingertips to the top of your shoulders and circle the right elbow around. So the whole arm's going around. You can make little circles. They can get a little bit bigger. And then let's reverse it. Reverse it. Whatever way you were doing, go the other way. Back to front, front to back. And let's switch sides. You might start with the smaller circles and then they get a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger and biggest. And then reverse it. Breathe in and breathe out, come back to center, lower your hands to your lap, curl your spine back to that cat pose, chin to chest, lean back, inhale, lift up, you're in a V. Arms in a V for victory, heart lifting, sitting bones back, we're curling into that C curve. Exhale, we round, chin to chest, Cat pose. Inhale, we lift up, we're in a V. Heart rising, thumbs to center. Exhale, we round, chin to chest. Inhale, lift it up. Gaze upwards. You can always support your head with one or both hands behind it. Never pushing head forward. Notice how I'm repeating that today because I don't want you pushing your head. Come back to center. All right, let's lower the arms down. Inhale, take the right heel, lift it up. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, left heel rises. Exhale, lower it down. Switch it up. And up. And lower both down. Interlace your fingers. Press your palms away from you. Lift both heels. Breathe in, breathe out, exhale, lower the heels down, open up your arms in a big wide T. Spread your fingers, 
feel space in between them, curl the fingertips under towards your wrist like a claw. Then inhale, lift the palms, press them away. Like you're there, you're in an elevator and the doors are gonna close, push it away. Don't let those doors close on you. Let's pull the hands in towards you and exhale, press them away. Inhale, breathe in. Exhale, press away. And now start to swing your arms forward. Lean slightly forward. Feel how the weight transfers in your feet. Now come back upright and maybe lean slightly back and lean forward and lean slightly back, heart lifting, and lean it forward, and exhale, take it back and slump asana, and then inhale, take it up, and exhale, curl it like the cat, and inhale, lift it up. This should feel good. Both arms upward, if it's accessible to you, let's make a circle going towards clockwise, towards the right, Circle it around and up. And then let's reverse it. Counterclockwise. This should feel nice on your spine. It's starting to stretch it out a little bit and flow the arms the other way. I, I don't know why I like to imagine we're moving through water and it's just arms are kind of gliding. It's a smooth flowing movement. And reverse it. Come back to center and exhale, lower your arms down. Let's take the shoulders towards the base of your neck. So how do we do that? Because we don't know exactly where they're at unless you look in the mirror. We can lift our ears up towards our shoulders and that's too far. And we can compress our shoulders down and that doesn't feel very good. We call that the hanger when they're kind of hanging down. So somewhere in the middle is about right. Then pull the ribs back. We're sitting tall. Exhale, take your right ear towards the right shoulder. Maybe you use the right fingertips to just give yourself a little stretch. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, head rises. So you might use your fingertips to lift it up. Notice how that side feels. Let's do the other side. So we make our adjustments again. Maybe the belly fell forward. Pull the ribs back. Feel that neutral spot in your shoulders. And then exhale, dropping the left ear down towards the left shoulder. Breathe in. And breathe out. Maybe you use your fingertips. It just gives us sometimes a little bit of an extra stretch without being too much. We're always gentle, especially on the neck. Inhale, head rises up. Lifting the right arm, just tap it back behind you, wherever it lands. The hand might be at your head or it might be a little bit lower. Notice where it touches, just showing you that. And then inhale, lift the arm up and exhale, lower it down. Inhale, arm rises, bend the elbow, fingertips back behind you. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, lift it back up and exhale, lower it down. Left side, left arm lifts, and it could be completely different um, depending upon how the shoulders are doing right now. Lower the fingertips down. Wherever they touch, doesn't matter. Inhale, lift it back up. You know, no pain, all gain. That's, that's my motto in my yoga classes. Inhale, arms up. Now, yoga should never hurt. It really should not hurt. Some, you know, a stretch may feel like a dull discomfort, but if it's a ping, it's too far. Inhale, lift. Better to go a third of the way of what you think, and then... You can always increase it rather than go too far and bending and release. Let that go. Lean forward. Hands to the seat or the back of the chair. 
Roll the shoulders up and back as you lean forward, holding on to the back of the chair. Chin is down so that we keep the back of the neck long. This is a hard one for people. The head going back like that crunches the neck and that chin is lifted. Um, if you take the head too far down, it might not feel so comfortable. And that would be more of a flat neck. So see if you can just find that place where there's a little curve. When you find that right spot, you're gonna feel your shoulder blades come on your back more. Breathe in and breathe out and release. Notice how that feels now. Let's bring the right knee out to the side and the left leg forward. The left leg forward. Place the heel underneath the knee. Kneecap is just about over the middle toes. And let's point and flex this front foot. So point the toes away from you and then inhale, bring them back up. So they're, they're reaching up towards the sky and towards your body. And then exhale, point the toes away from you and inhale, lift them up. You don't need to gaze at them or brawl at them. They're doing the best they can. Reach them forward and then lift them back up. And let's circle the left ankle and foot around one way and then the other. Then lift back up. Take your hands to your hips, lengthen them out to the side, relax the shoulders, lower the right forearm to the thigh and circling now the left arm around. And you might gaze as you make this circle. You can go slow, you can go a little faster, not too haphazard, not too fast, right? And then arm is going to land somewhere over the ear. Pull the ribs back, lengthen through your elbow and your wrist to the best of your range of motion, nobody else's. Push firmly down through the right foot. You might feel a little opening in this inner thigh. If it's too much, walk the foot back in a little bit. You can always decrease if your body tells you to, that's the sign, body knows best. We're gonna push down through this heel and the right foot and rise up, rise up. Now take your left hand to the chair and inhale your right arm. Good, draw the shoulders up and back. Breathe in and breathe out and take the side then now, toward, it's not gonna be a big side then, just a little one towards the left. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, pull your left heel towards you. Pull the left heel towards you. Let's hold on to the seat now and drag the left heel forward. And then pull the heel back. Now, we're gonna lift the right leg, Place it next to the left. Let's do that a few times. You're going to hold on to the side of the chair. Inhale, lift it. Exhale, place it out to the side. Lower it down. Inhale, it lifts. Pull it back in. Lower it down. You're only going to go as wide as your body tells you. That could be right here. That could be right here. We lift it. We place it back down. One more time, circle it out to the side and bring it back in. Other side now, extending the right leg, take the left knee out to the side. So heel and ankle underneath knee. Let's lift those left toes without looking and then Re it's like you're reaching forward with your toes and then push the toe pads down. And notice how the muscles on the bottom of your foot activate. Now we've got this right heel forward, point the toes away, oh, just a little snap, crackle, pop there. Inhale, lift the toes back up, up. Exhale, reach them forward and down and then up. If you cramp, bring that foot back in, maybe 
move it around a little bit, maybe give it a massage. No, if you have a cramp, stop, breathe. You can always begin again. Let's circle the ankle around and about on the right side. Breathing in and breathing out and then reverse, reverse your ankle. And maybe you hear a few snaps and crackles. Then we're gonna sit tall, take our arms out into T. That's it, relax your shoulders. Turn your, your you're gonna take your thumbs up and you'll feel the arm rotate and then the palms face upward. Now feel like you're relaxing your shoulders. Bring the forearm to the thigh and circle the right arm around and about. And notice how it's not just the arm moving. You're gonna feel fascia move on the right side of your body as you do this. So circling around and about. Breathe in and breathe out. And then let's take the arm over the ear, elbow may be bent. You may extend through it in the wrist and the fingers. Belly's pulling in, pressing the bottom forearm into the thigh. So feel a little bit of toning in your leg. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's push down through the foot and the heel and rise up. Rise up. Take your right hand to the side of the chair and your left arm upwards. Got a little side bend here. Just teeny one and then inhale back to center and release the arm down good we're gonna play with that idea of bringing this foot back in and then opening it back up and drag now the right heel underneath the knee and bring the foot back in and open it back up. Now, you may not lift it that high, don't worry. Lift it to your ability. It's heavy, this leg is heavy. And hold on to the side of the chair for support. Notice how it's beautiful. I can see you guys doing that. See, sometimes I see, sometimes I don't. I see a few kneecaps rising. Breathe in and breathe out. Notice what muscles you are using to lift this leg up and then bring it back in. Okay, we're back to center. Circle around on your hips a few times. Breath is in and breath is out. Come back to center and let's bring the right foot, either the Heel is going to the ankle and pushing the, the, the left leg into the right heel for tree pose like this, or this is number four pose as well, or place your foot on a block or two for the variation of number four or tree pose, or bring the ankle on up, bring the ankle on up because we are doing an hip opener and an inner thigh opener. And then let's just rock forward and back a little bit so you can start to notice where is this pose going? Doesn't matter where the foot is, doesn't matter. You choose the variation that's right for you. Just lean forward and back a little bit. And as you do that, take your right hand and gently press into the thigh. That'll help to open up a little bit here. Then lift tall. Let's lift the knee up and then slowly lower it down. It looks the same like this. Knee comes up, lower down. Inhale, the knee rises. Exhale, the knee lowers. Knee up and knee down. We lift tall. We extend our spine. We move about a third of the way. Notice how the hip feels. So it could be a quarter of the way, it could be halfway. And that's where you get to be the wise one of your body. You know, you know where to go. 
I do not know your body. You know your body. So what I do know is you don't want to push too far. Then we lengthen forward, sitting bones back, spine long. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. One hand may be at the foot. If, especially if it's up, if it's down, it might not be, right? And then we're gonna rise back up and extend the leg. Now, you could rest the foot on blocks or you could rest it on another chair in front of you or you could just have your strap and lift your leg. So for this one today, I'm gonna do that, but know that you can do any of the options in order to stretch this leg. So I've actually got a big strap here and I had shown this so that we know we don't have to clasp the strap with our hands. A lot of people get hand arthritis or finger arthritis. And so if that's the case, you might not want to clasp the strap and you could put your forearms in instead like this to stretch the leg down here or up there. Or you can hold on to the strap as long as that's okay for you. And we can bend the knee in and then press it away as we sit tall. Try to sit tall as you stretch the leg away. If your body starts to do this like Shlampasana, then lift it back up and maybe not stretch so far. We haven't really stretched the leg yet, so it may not be ready to straighten all the way. Breathe in and breathe out. Let's bring the heel in and the toes out. Heel in, toes out. Feel activation in your muscles by hugging your muscles in into your thigh, and then it's gonna stretch the back of the leg. Inhale, toes back up. Same thing here when the toes are up. If that doesn't change. See if you can feel like a hugging in of the muscles into the top of the thigh as you stretch the back. Let's take the leg out to the side and see how that is. You could bring it down. If you bring it down, you're gonna to need to go a little bit more towards the edge of your seat. Because otherwise, when I'm back here and I do that, it kind of cuts a little bit. So make your adjustment. You should not feel uncomfortable when you're stretching. That's going to make you clench more. Let's bring the leg back in. Take the strap off and let it go. And then maybe open and close your knees a few times. And here's our seated butterfly. Push your heels in towards each other. I know we'll do the other side in a moment. Sit tall. Let's find a twist with our seated butterfly. Now, if you have another chair in front of you and you want to put your feet up on the chair, you could do that too for butterfly. Let's take our right hand towards the left thigh and our left hand behind us. Breathe in and breathe out. And breathe in and breathe out. Inhale to center, and let's go the other way. Left hand outside, right thigh, and right hand behind you. Spine is tall, yet long. Breathe in, breathe out. It's a long time to hold that butterfly. If you need to, take it out of butterfly. You can come out of your butterflies. Inhale, come to center. Let's release the feet back down so we can do the other side with our variation of number four pose. So that could be no blocks or, a, or some blocks or books. And we're right here. So this will open up. If, if this is a good place to be, if your hips are a little tight, but not a lot of tight, just kind of depends. Then we're going to go forward like that. If you feel that you can bring that ankle on up over, then go for it. We sit tall. It's so important that we get long rather than round over it. Um, we don't want to round the back like the cat here. We're looking to lengthen it and the sitting bones are moving back. Hand may be at a foot if you're in this 
variation. We're looking forward and down. Our ribs are back. Breathe in and breathe out. And breath is in and breath is out. We're going to push down through our foot to rise back up. Notice how it feels to be right here. Let's go down one more time. Lengthen, sitting bones back. Notice how maybe you go slightly further on the second time. This is a great one to do if you're sitting around, maybe watching a program. Just make sure those hips are open and then inhale and lift back up and come on out of it so we can stretch out our hammies, our hamstrings, and maybe you feel this in the calf too. And you can play with the variation of the foot, the heel down and the heel pressing down and pulling the strap here. And then maybe you take it up to the few blocks or you lift the leg about hip height. So this is a nice place to do B2 with the heel on the blocks, or we lift it up. And then if we're using our forearms in here, it looks like this. I like to do the prayer. You could even have your elbows out to the side. That feels really good too. So you can kind of play around with that. There's not a right or a wrong. We do want to sit tall. We don't want that business. We sit tall and breathe in and breathe out. And breath is in and breath is out. See if you can imagine that somebody was gently putting their palm into the bottom, the sole of your foot and gently pressing your foot towards you. So you feel like this, this bone, this thigh bone, the femur is coming into the socket. Let's turn the toes out and the heel in. And maybe it's slightly bent. And maybe it's not. Just feel that you're pushing the heel away. You can always take a break. You can always turn it a little bit more in, but not maybe all the way if this was too much. And it's nice to play with it because you'll feel different areas. Open up the leg out to the side. Keep tall. It's a heavy leg. It makes you want to teeter-totter, right? So you might even take your opposite arm out to the side to kind of balance it out. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's bring the leg back up in front of us and then release the strap and place our foot back down. And we will move towards the mat. So here we go. You wanna make sure you're safe. And I like to put the chair against the wall because I know I'm going to be safe. And then maybe put a blanket in front for your knee pads. They make those knee pads too. You can get those. A lot of people use those um, instead of the blanket or maybe even in addition to. You definitely want to have your padding ready. And then make sure your, your props are by your side so you're strap and your block are nearby in case you need them. And then you're gonna hold on to the chair and slowly come on down. And everybody's got their different ways of going. So make sure you're safe and take it slow. And then you can move the chair out of the way, which I will do. You don't need to get up and do that. I'm just doing that so you don't have to look at the chair and it blocks your view. Let's go towards hands and knees for cat cow. Someone said to me yesterday, well, what does it do for you to go onto your hands and your knees? Well, this is great weight bearing. And so if it's safe for you to go down, I highly recommend it. Um, if not, of course you don't. And you could be doing something against the wall instead by facing a wall and doing some weight bearing. That is still weight bearing using the wall. Honestly, I would love to do a wall class with you guys. All right, so here we go. 
our hands are down, our fingers are spread. We're we are weight bearing. If your wrists are sore, roll the mat and place your wrists on the rolled mat. That's one option. That is one option. Some people like to put their hands onto blocks and that might feel better for you too. Um, some people go onto their forearms, so their elbows instead. And it looks like this. And some people like to do their knuckles like this. You can experiment and see which one's right for you. This one, I think it's kind of tough, honestly, but I've seen people do it, so I'm giving you the variation. Let's round our spine like the cat. We did that in the chair, and you're welcome to do that again in the chair. And then reverse it. So notice how the sitting bones lift. The shoulder blades come onto the back. The, the finger pads and the palms are pressing down and the neck is long. So the head is slightly lifted, not kinking back and not forward like that, but about in the middle. So the neck spine is in line with the heart spine. Round the spine like the cat, pull the belly in and up and then reverse it and reverse it. And let's do spinal balance. Now, if you're in the chair, you can take your right leg forward and your left arm out to the side. On the earth, we'll take the right leg back, press out through the heel. <clears throat> you can keep the foot where it's at or lift it anywhere from here to here. So down, toes down or heel up. Then left fingertips forward or Maybe hand on a block like that, or arm lifts up. So there's so many different variations of this one. If you're in the chair, go ahead and place your right foot forward and your left arm out to the side. You're going to feel a toning in your hip. Breathe in and breathe out. And breath is in and breath is out. We are toning this right hip and then release it. And let's take a child pose before going to the other side. Now that doesn't mean a full child pose if your body's not ready for it. It could just be rocking forward and back like this. Some of you might be like, I'm taking a child pose and that's wonderful. So a full child pose would be hips back and arms either forward or elbows bent. If that's where you'd like to be, go for it. Breathe in and breathe out wherever you're at. That's kind of like your pause in the middle. Then we'll do the other side. We lift back up. This time, if you're in the chair, the left leg is forward and the right arm is out to the side. Pressing the heel back, rock it forward and back. Breathe in and breathe out lengthening through the back of the calf. Breathing in and breathing out, perhaps lifting the leg up, toning the left hip. Breathe in, breathe out, pull the belly in and up, press the finger pads down so we feel strong. Toes can be down, toes can be up, or and on black or arm up. So arm up, thumb is up, hitchhiker thumb. Breathe in, breathe out, gazing forward and down. This is practice for your balance. So you may feel some wobbling. That's okay, you can come out of it. You can come out of it and take a pause. We can also notice how does it feel to wobble? How does it feel to feel slightly imbalanced? That's part of the practice because this is a practice. It is not perfect. Place the block back down. Find your way to some type of resting pose. It could be rocking forward and back. It could be swaying the hips one way and then the other. 
and one way and then the other. And we're gonna come down now onto our bellies. Now, if you know you get lower back pain, you might want to put a blanket under your ribs and, and pelvis. Some people like it. And this is where you need to experiment for you. Um, it's certainly not a requirement. Um, I'm going to press, put it to the side here. And then we're going to come down onto the belly and allow the forehead to relax onto the back of your hand. And just let your hips sway to the right and to the left and back to the right and to the left. Breathing in and breathing out and move back to center. Now we're gonna do what's called inchworm. So that's lifting your hips up like you're doing a pelvic tilt, but you, instead of being on your back or in the chair, you're on your belly and then take your sitting bones down and inhale and lift them up and exhale and lower them down. Inhale them up, exhale, lower them down. Let's do a cobra. You're gonna take your hands by your side. So if you're in the chair, you can still bring your hands by your side and shoulders are up and back, hips are toning, Heart is lifting and telescoping forward. Shoulder blades on the back, beautiful. So the shoulders are rolling up and back, up and back. Now, head is in line with spine. So not that business where the head's going back and not that business where the head is going forward, but just about, it's this place where you feel this line between your heart and your neck spine. So heart spine and neck spine. Let's exhale and lower down. That's a lot of holding that up there, isn't it? You can always lower down while I'm describing. You don't have to stay up the whole time. Let's do it again. Shoulders up and back, push down, heart rising, telescoping forward, feeling really broad across your chest, your collarbone, exhale, lower down. Inhale, we lift up, shoulders up and back, hips toning, exhaling, lowering down. Now we stack our hands once again. We're going to play with lifting one leg and then the other. Inhale, right leg lifts, hip tones. Spread your toes. And you might do this in the chair. You could lift. Other side, left leg lifting, hip toning, keeping pelvis level. So it's not tipping to the right or tipping to the left. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, left leg lifts, toes spread. And exhale and release. We're gonna extend our arms now up forward when we're lying down. They'd be up over your head if you are seated. So legs are long, arms are long. We're going to lift the right leg and the left arm and tone that hip. Now you don't need the leg up here. It's just kind of, it doesn't matter how high it lifts. Even if it doesn't lift, you can imagine it. Hug the muscles to your leg bone. Lengthen it long. Karate chop the earth with your right hand. Exhale, release. Take a little break. Breathe in. And breathe out. And breathe in. And breathe out. Let's do the left side. Left leg lifts. Toes spread. Right arm rises. Thumb is up. Toning. Lengthening. Heart is lifted, head is in line with spine. So it's not back like that and it's not down like that. It's as though your crown of your head is reaching straight forward. Reach it straight forward, reach forward through the right arm and back through the left leg. And exhale and release and take a little breath. 
you might be building a little bit of heat here. Just being on your belly will do that too. All right, we're gonna go now on to our, either our side for a thigh stretch or onto our belly. Now, if you're in the chair, I'll show you very quickly how you can do a thigh stretch just so you can see. So those of you who are, you're gonna choose either being on your belly or your side if you're down on the mat, it looks like this for the thigh stretch. So we're on the side and we take the outside leg back to get that stretch. Ribs are back in order to get a stretch here. Hold on to the back of the chair. You might want a block under you or a blanket under your foot if you're cramping. Okay, now, so we're on our side or our belly for our thigh stretch. It looks like this. We're either here and you can rest your head on your bent elbows and take the knee towards you, hand to the ankle, pull it back. That would be one. Then we're pushing foot into hand and hand into foot. Now, some people don't do this thing forward. They just grab their ankle or their pant leg and that's fine. Bottom knee can be bent for balance. And then this top shoulder rolls up and back. So that's really a little bit of a back bend. And then you're kicking the leg back. So if you're on your belly, it looks like this. And you can have your head down. You're pulling the heel towards your buttocks, but you're also kicking it away at the same time. And you'll notice a stretch in the front of the thigh. You want to keep your knee so it's right straight out from your hip bone. Now, another option is to be up on your elbow and do this. And some people do this, especially if they can't feel the stretch, this will intensify it a little bit. Some people are really long on the front of their body. And so that's what they need. Let's do the other side. So if you're in the chair, you're gonna turn the other way for the outside leg and choose your variation on your side or on your belly, elbows bent. Then bring the foot up towards you or grab your foot back behind you. Keep the knee level with your hips. So not up here and not, actually this is fine. The low is fine because we're going in line with our hip. But if it's up here, knees don't really like that so much. And then pull the heel in towards your buttocks, but kick it away a little bit. And that will increase the stretch, but it also keep you safe. And so belly or side. Now, if you feel like your ribs are going forward, pull them back. That indeed will also help you to feel the stretch more. And that is the case whether you are seated in a chair or down on the mat. Okay, we're going to roll onto our backs. Come on to the back and take a moment for a breath break. Hands can be on your belly. Hands can be down by your side. You can let your knees come together. This is constructive rest pose. A great place to be. You can do this in bed for sure. Um, so, and some people put a bolster under here and practice some breathing. Let's take our, our hands are on our belly or down by your side. But if you want to feel your belly move, then do bring your hands on to your belly. Let's breathe in, belly expands, breathe out, belly relaxes back down. We breathe in and we breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. Breathing in and breathing out. So this is a great place to practice your breathing. Now I'll take maybe your hands to the side of your ribs and breathe in, ribs expand and breathe out and ribs relax back down. 
So this is a really, it's a 360. Your breath, it, you're expanding throughout the whole, the front, the back, and the sides of your torso. Let's bring our right knee in towards us. Give it a hug. And then lifting the leg skyward, it may not go all the way, and circle it down and around a few times. Now, if your back starts to lift up and you feel pain when you do this, do not take the leg so far out. So if you take it out here and the lower back expands, bend the knee back in. We're just making little circles and they can get bigger. Try to keep your ribs down to support your back. So you're pushing your ribs down into the mat. Now, if you're in the chair, you're pulling your ribs towards the back of the chair. Breathe in and breathe out. And breath is in and breath is out. And then place the foot back down. Other side. Bring the left knee in towards you, lifting the leg skyward and then around and about. Leg does not need to extend all the way. Try to keep your ribs down. If you extend the leg and it's too far, if it's too far and you feel lower back pain, that means you bring that knee back in. Circle it around and about as you breathe in and you breathe out. Feel this kind of gliding motion. And then come back to bridge, prep pose. So heels are under knees, knees are bent and upright. And push down through your right foot. I can't see it. Of course, I can't see it. I can't really see your feet. But push your right foot down. Feel the toe pads push down, the big toe push down. And feel the muscles in the center of your arch and your foot activate. And then exhale and release that. Other side, push the left foot down, the left toe pads down, and notice what you feel. Activation in the leg and release. And let's push now both feet down, toe pads down, heels are pressing down, pull them towards you. You get some nice toning and release, let that go. Breathe in, belly expands. Breathe out through your nose. Belly softens back down. Let's walk in place. So bring the right knee in towards you. Let it go. You certainly can do this in the chair. Lifting one leg and then the other. And feel which part of your foot lands first. See if you can bring your awareness to the heel lowering down first and then the rest of the foot. So it's heel. Ball toe, heel, ball toe. See how that feels. Heel, ball toe, heel, ball toe as it lowers. A few more times. Walk it in place. Breathe in and breathe out. And really feel the foot lift and lower. Give it some rhythm. How about we take one arm up and then the other as we're doing this? How about opposite knee and arm? So it's like walking on your back, walking on your back. Alternating arm and leg. And maybe you lift the arm up as the leg goes up. Walking on your back. Who would have thought? Walking on your back. Good. Let's take a block. I got to lift up to get my block because it's over here. And place the block in between your hands. Push the palms into the block. Now, press your ribs down into the mat. You're going to lift the block tall and your shoulders are going to come off the mat. Then exhale and release the shoulders back down, but your arms stay long. Let's do that again. Inhale, lift up, push palms into block, feel your pelvic floor tone as you do this, push your feet down, relax 
the shoulders down. Now, as you push your palms into the block, take it back behind you, only to the point where you can keep your ribs down. If your lower back starts to lift, bring the block back up. So strong hands and arms, pushing palms in the block, ribs down. If the ribs start lifting up off the earth, then stop the arms going back and lift them back up. Keep pushing your palms in a block and let's lift it up. Feel your strength. One more time. Palms in the block, reach up towards the sky. Exhale, lower the shoulders down. Press the ribs down as you take the block back behind you. Stop when you feel some stickiness or lower back lifting. Inhale, lift the block back up and place it in between your thighs. Hug the block with your inner thighs. Hug it. Give it a good hug. You certainly can put a block in between your thighs in the seat as well. So breathe in. You don't feel them, the inner thighs hugging. As you breathe out through your nose, hug the inner thighs into the block and feel, feel your pelvic floor and your lower abdomen engage. Then inhale, release that tone. Exhale, squeeze the block, feel your pelvic floor tone. These are small movements, but really good to help tone the pelvic floor and your core area and release. Exhale, hug block, pull belly in, breathe in and breathe out and release that, that hugging in. We're gonna go for bridge. So feet are underneath. Arms can be down by your side or in robot. Robots where the palms are facing each other and the upper arms are down. Press down, rise up, and walk your elbows underneath you. Now you want your neck not to be pushing down into the mat, so you might lower your hips and check it out. Take your hand behind your neck and make sure there's space in between the floor and your neck. You should be able to stick your hand behind there and even maybe two hands behind there or a mouse under there or a little creature because your neck is curving upwards. So now we push up, neck stays neutral. You'll feel a little pressure, the back of the head pressing down just a little bit. Hips toning. As you press your feet down, you feel your hips tone. Release that pressure, let that go. Let's do it again. Push feet down, feel hips tone. Breathe in, breathe out and release. Push feet down, feel hips tone. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Push feet down, feel hips tone. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's lower the hips down. Let that go. Let that go. Take a breath in and out. And let's bring our knees up towards us and give us a happy baby, happy baby pose. Arms can be weaved in and outside your legs. Doesn't really matter because you are a happy baby and that's all that matters. Maybe your fingers go be in between your toes. That would work too. That could be fun. I think babies love to marvel at their feet. They're very smart, really. They can find pleasure in things that we forget about and don't pay attention to. And then come back to center and let's find our final spinal twist. I'm going to shift a little bit away from the wall. You're going to bring your knees in towards you, lower the knees down to the right and your arms into cactus. Now, if you're in a chair, you're going to take your left hand outside your right thigh and twist towards your right. 
Some people let their knees come up higher and some it's too intense and they bring their knees down lower. Make, find that place where it's comfortable for you. If your knees don't land down, you can put a blanket or a pillow or a bolster underneath your knees so they do land down. Then you're gonna feel an opening through the opposite shoulder, the front of that shoulder. You're tapping that shoulder blade down towards the earth. Maybe you're turning the head the opposite way of the knees. Your nose away. Breathe in. And breathe out. Three to five times. No rushing. And you're going to come back to center and lower your knees down the opposite way. Let them go the opposite way. And then you can always adjust your spine and your legs and maybe put a pillow under your knees. Arms are in cactus or long, or long in a T. You can gaze the opposite way as your knees if that feels okay on your neck. Take a few breaths wherever you're at in your twist. Relaxing the jaw. You might be closing your eyes, knowing you're winding down your practice. When you come out of that twist, find your way to your relaxation pose. So that could be feet together, knees apart. That could be legs on a bolster. Lots of people like that for their lower back. It's something you can do in bed too with pillows underneath your knees. Looks like this. And then some of you might put your legs up the wall. That's super nice too. And you'll allow your arms to relax down by your side or maybe hands on your belly. This is a practice of releasing and letting go. If it feels safe for you, close your eyes. Soften the breath. Release control of the breath. Feel your breath. Notice where you feel the breath in your body. You feel it in the belly. You feel it all the way down to your toes. These are questions. Not supposed to be. There's no correct answer. Relaxing the belly. Breathe in. And out at your pace, at a relaxed pace. Arms are relaxed, fingers relaxed, jaw relaxed. Face relaxed, facial muscles relaxed, eyes 